Hello there. How are you doing? I welcome you to this mobile photography class and I'm so glad to have you here. Because you watching this video right now means you have purchased this course and I congratulate you because here you will be learning how to take and edit amazing quality photos using your mobile phone. So this is just an introductory video to tell you a little bit about myself and to give you the course outline. But before I move on, I'd like to tell you that this is not a long course. It's not something you have to take out three weeks or two weeks or a month for. No. Under a day, in fact, within a few hours, you should be done with this course. I made it very brief and precise. And I believe that by the time you are done with this course, you will be a pro in mobile photography or otherwise known as phone photography. Moving on. My name is Adeni Jibankoli Covenant, also known as PD Blaze. Some know me as Blazy, some know me as Speedy Blaze. I'm a video editor by profession. I work for organizations, I work for brands, I work for YouTubers. And I've also trained over 150 people in mobile video editing. If you want to purchase my course on mobile video editing, that is my WhatsApp contact showing right there on your screen. You can send me a DM to show your interest. Also, I'm a graphics designer. I believe you know who a graphic designer is. I design flyers, YouTube thumbnails, and so on. And I'm also a comedian. I have a YouTube channel where I do comedy skits and I drop them there. Also, I'm the founder of Blazyworks Media. I don't want to go into details of what Blazyworks is because I don't want to make this video too long. If you want to know that, join my WhatsApp community. That's my contact showing right there on your screen. And finally, this talks about what we are about to learn. I'm a phone photographer. I've taken different amazing photos with my mobile phone and I received a series of requests telling me to teach on how I've been able to achieve it. And that is why I decided to put out this course for all to learn. So what exactly are you going to be learning in this course? Well, we're going to be talking about camera settings. I'm going to show you different camera settings to fit for different atmospheric conditions. There are times whereby not knowing the camera settings that fit for a particular atmospheric condition can, you know, cause for low picture quality. If there is high sunshine, there is a particular camera settings to use. If there is low light in a particular environment, there is a kind of camera settings to use. So I will show you how this can be done. Now I know what you're thinking. I'm using the Techno Camon 12 Pro. You might be using an ITEL phone, you might be using a Samsung, you might be using a Techno of another, you know, another, I'm using Techno Camon, you might be using something else. Well, I'm just going to show you the basic camera settings that are common to all cameras. It is not every camera that are the same, quite alright, but I'll show you the settings that are basic to almost everything. Also, I'm going to be giving you some tips and, you know, simple tricks to help you in phone photography there are times whereby you know a particular angle of shots can spoil the entire picture so you need to get the right angle you need to get the right whether you should take the photo in portrait or landscape and all those tricks like that i will show you how you can be able to um know all of these things on your own and finally we are going to be editing pictures using the Photoshop Express application. I've been using the application for years and I can assure you that by the time we are done, you will know the ins and outs of Photoshop Express application. It's like the smaller version of Photoshop for Android phone. And it's very, very efficient. I used it for years before I discovered its full potentials. But you don't have to go through that stress. I'm just going to show you everything once and for all. So you don't have to um, spend much time. So I believe I've been able to um, introduce myself to you and introduce this course to you. Without further ado, let's get right into it. See you in the next video. What's up guys? I welcome you to another session of this training on mobile photography. Once again, my name is Speedy Blaze and in this session, I'll be giving you some tips to help you on your mobile photography journey. Now, of course, there are tons of tips and numerous tips that can help you in mobile photography. But because this is a kind of basic class, I'm not going to go too deep. So I'll just give you five powerful tips that can help you and that you will need constantly. 
I've done the introduction in the first video, so I'll not like to spend too much time on that. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Before giving you my first tip, I'd like you to know that the quality of a picture is not really dependent on the camera and it's not really dependent on the subject. It's totally and majorly dependent on the operator of the camera. So if you think your phone's camera is not good enough to take quality amazing photographs, well then you might be ready to change that mindset because after giving you these tips, if you try them out, you'll be shocked at the quality of images the camera you think is not good will now begin to produce. I hope you get it. So my first tip for you is clean your camera. Now you might think that is so insignificant. Well, that is why I said it one by one so that you can pay attention to it. Now your phone is a mobile phone. You carry it about. It is possible that there are dust particles or some other particles that might have settled on the surface of your camera. So cleaning it will go a long way to help the quality of your photos. You can use a dry cloth or a cloth with a little bit of moisture to actually wipe the face of the camera before taking any photograph. And you will definitely see a difference in the quality of the photos you are taking. My second tip for you is light. Light is very important in determining the quality of your photo. If you don't want photos with greens or photos with noise, then you have to have sufficient lightning in the environment of the photo shoot. If you are not using a digital camera, then don't trivialize the factor of light in your photographs. If you are taking photographs in a place with low light condition, you can actually increase the exposure of your camera to allow for the lens to take in more light. I will explain this when we are talking about camera settings, I will really explain this better than now. But note that light is very important. You can use artificial light, ring light, LED light, and you can also use the natural light, sunlight, if you are taking a nature kind of photograph that you are taking it outdoors. My next tip for you is to always make use of the grid lines on the camera. I'll also talk about this very well in the next video when we are talking about camera settings. Grid lines actually helps you to draw the attention of your viewers to the object of your photograph. It can be a person and it can be some objects. So I will not talk about this much because I can't really practicalize it now. But when we are talking about camera settings, I will talk about it very well. Tip number four learn to set your focus and maintain stability a lot of the times the reason your pictures are blurry is because your hand is not stable while taking the photographs try not to be so shaky with your hands if your hands is shaky you have a blurry photo so try to get the phone tripod stand or try to maintain as much stability as you can with your hands so that you will not get a blurry photo also set your focus set your focus whenever you tap the face of your camera there is something that appears that allows you to set your focus when we are talking about camera settings in the next video i will also talk about this much more and finally tip number five take multiple photos a lot of the time you take photos and within a few minutes you are out of the place on getting home you discover that none of the shots you took were good so take multiple photos i'll advise taking up to like 10 shots per photograph so that you can make your best choice out of everything actually from my experience so far i think ladies are good at doing this ladies take multiple photographs if you check the gallery of an average lady's mobile phone you will see a lot a lot a lot of photographs and that really helps because you have um a lot of alternatives so just take your best shots and then you can go ahead for the editing so these were my five powerful tips for mobile photography i hope you have learned something and now that we have talked about this it's the kind of theoretical aspect so let us go for the practical aspect where i will show you some camera settings thank you for watching up to this point see you in the next video Hey guys, I welcome you to another session of this awesome training on mobile photography. I hope you have been enjoying it and I hope you have been learning a lot so far. So like I said in the previous video, here I'll be doing practicals of what we've talked about. 
so that it will not just be theory you will see me practicalizing those things so right now i'll just head over to my camera application right it's right here all right here we have my laptop as the object of this photograph and um let's go ahead to check out some some interesting stuff in this camera first i like to clean the face of my camera just like i said the other time i like to clean the face of my camera so i'll just do that right now Going to the dry piece of cloth. All right, I'm done with that aspect. So let's go ahead and check out some settings. Right here, you can see the settings right here. So I'm just it might not be exactly the same interface on your own camera. It can be on the other side, it can be in this side, it can be somewhere here, whichever, there will always be a settings icon. So let's just click on that and check out what we have there. So this first one, this is the first session, the general settings. So this first one talks about shutter sound. You can decide to turn that on or off. That's the sound the camera makes whenever you take a picture. This talks about the grid. Uh -huh. I talked about this in the last um, video when I, when, I was, when I was talking about um, making use of the grid lines to pull attention of viewers to the object or the photograph, the grid lines. Let's go back and check it out. These are the grid lines. You can see them right here. You see them, and they are the ones that go horizontally too as well. Sorry, let's see. I come. So, those are the grid lines. Ideally, you don't want to keep the object of the photograph in the exact middle. You don't want to keep it like exactly in the middle. You want to make it, especially if you are taking a landscape shot. This is a portrait shot, by the way. You can make it a landscape shot so you can have more space. But I would like to keep this at portrait. If it's a portrait shot, then keeping it in the middle is, is enough. But you can just shift it a bit so that the major part of the object will be towards the right side or towards the left, whichever side you pick. And just a little bit will be towards the right. You see what I'm trying to talk about? That's professional photography. Keep major parts in the right or in the left. But just try to avoid keeping it exactly in the middle, something like this. But try to keep it like this. I hope you can see the difference. Or like this. But I, I personally prefer keeping it at the right side, so I'll go for this. Okay, so that's the grid lines. You can choose to enable it or not, but I advise you to enable it. It will help you in accuracy of your photography, of your photograph. Location, that one is Google stuff, so you can access your photos at any place, so I'm not going to that. This is the custom volume keys, right? Now, a lot of Android phones have the future where you can actually use the lower volume button to take a photograph you don't have to tap on this um this one you're looking at right here you don't have to tap on it all the time once i press the lower volume button like this there i have it i've taken a photograph just like that just because i pressed it you can see this is the photograph i took just now so that's the the function but you can choose to change the function by just aligning to zoom instead you see right now i've changed it to zoom so let me go back and see what's going to happen when I press it, you saw that it zoomed out and it took a picture there. Okay, let me try to press the upper volume button. Okay, that one too took a picture. I don't really like giving it the zoom function, so I just prefer to leave it at um, shorter. I, I like using it to take pictures. Okay, here we have touch capture. Touch capture. Now, this talks about uh, its best practicalized. Let me turn it on. And you see what I'm talking about. Now there are times whereby you want to take picture of if it was a person that was it is a laptop. There is this feature called face detector in the face of almost every camera. There is this box that appears around the face of the person whose picture you want to take. Now if you tap on that box, you can either decide to set focus or take picture. Now I'll explain that in a bit. If I tap the face of my camera now, let's go back to the settings. Because I have enabled touch capture function, if I tap the face of my camera now, it will take the picture immediately. Let's check it out. You saw that? I will try it again so you can be sure. You see that? That's because I've enabled the function of touch capture. But as a beginner, I don't advise you to enable the function of touch capture because it doesn't really help. If you have it in your camera settings, I advise you to disable it just like I'm going to do right now. 
because ideally that function should be used to set focus not capture this is a function of that feature let's try out something if i tap on this right now it's up it helps to focus on the objects and somehow dissuade the viewers from the background you know i talked about in the previous video that i tried to dissuade viewers from the background aside using grid lines you can also use this function now if i tap on this right now that brings me to the point of light now in this photograph uh there is no particular light source i'm using daylight i'm, I'm obviously outside so i'm using the daylight so i don't have to actually use any external light but from my own perspective this lightning is not enough so right now i will explain touch focus and exposure exposure is light okay increasing the exposure of your camera means in, uh, allowing light to come into your camera so let me just do that right now aside the fact that i can touch this and focus on the object i can also touch if you notice after touching something appears beside it something like a sunshine kind of image kind of icon now that sunshine icon let me tap and try to bring it out i can as well drag it up to increase the brightness you can see that i can drag it up to increase the brightness and i can drag it down to decrease the brightness of the photograph okay i can drag it up i can drag it down so because i feel i feel my own uh scene the location at which i am right now the lighting is not enough I can just drag it up a little bit to my satisfaction okay it's getting brighter you can make it bright enough for the object to be visible and dark enough for the background to be unnoticeable okay but in this case you can't really see because this is a flat kind of shot there's no really depth of field i didn't explain depth of field because it's an advanced kind of feature so i didn't really want to explain that but anyways i would just like to increase the, the exposure right now now i don't know why anybody will want to use <laughs> i don't know why anybody will want to use um this kind of bright extremely bright uh scene to take picture except if it's a spectacular kind of shot and some would definitely want to use this so let me just take it up a little bit to my satisfaction and right there i have it right there i have it i think i'm okay with this exposure oh it's too bright let me bring it down a bit by the way, you can bring it down when editing. If you made a mistake while shooting, you can always adjust while editing. Let me take it up. Okay, I think this is aha. Uh -huh. This is this is fine by me. Having talked about all of that, let's go back to the settings and check out some other interesting features. This is auto watermark. Watermark is what appears um, at the, the like the lower side, like at the lower side of your video whenever you're taking a picture. Now let me enable it and let's see it function. Let me just capture that. And let's check out the picture now you see this camon 12 pro I, I mentioned this in the introductory video that i use a camon 12 pro so you can see it written right here it was not in the previous pictures because it was not enabled but right here it is because i enabled the feature but i don't like it i made my own custom watermark so i'm just going to disable that picture size now this is a major major part that we need to pay attention to because Many people just buy the phone and they don't bother to change it from its default settings. Now, now we have the 16M here, the 12M, the 8M, 8M, but different dimensions. This is 8M and 8M. But if you check out, it is 4128 by 1920 and this is 3264 by 2448. Okay, and this is 6M. Now, you always want to choose the highest. Don't let me, don't let me bother explaining the deep um, aspect of this to you because, like I said, this is a basic class, so I don't want to go too deep into the technical explanations but you want to choose the highest obviously the highest number here is 16 megapixels by the way photos are quantified kind of in megapixels so this is the highest 16 is the highest so i'm just going to choose that yeah so if you have that kind of thing in your camera settings be sure to check it out and make sure to choose the highest quality delay capture now this is a function of if you are doing a DIY, DIY means do it yourself. If you are doing a DIY kind of photography and you have a tripod stand where you placed your phone, you can easily choose the 10 seconds delay. Just tap it. While it is counting down from 9, 
8765. You can just quickly run to the front of your camera, take and strike the best pose, and then the picture will be taken. There we have it. And then the picture is taken. Okay, but I don't like it. I, I use it though if I'm if I'm alone and I want to do some kind of complicated shot. Then uh, I use that function. There's a time in my phone photography journey where I started cloning myself. You see double of me, three of me on the screen, and then I I actually um, used that feature of delay. But right now I rarely use it. Okay, except if I want to go back to cloning myself. In the advanced class of this photography, we'll talk about cloning and dividing yourself into several parts, just like you can see right here, like I've done to myself. Okay, now I think we've pretty exhausted the settings right here, okay? The last one we talked about was delay capture, so we are done. But we can see some other aspects in this place. There are some other stuff written right here. This is for recording video, obviously, so I'm not talking about video. So let's just go back. This beauty, let of ladies use this. It kind of smoothens your skin. I kind of adjust your body shape to how the camera feels it should be so we started from ai cam ai means artificial intelligence so this is uh, how the camera uses its own intelligence to make the best settings for the scene but it can't be always perfect that's why you have to do some adjustment at times so you can get the uh, like the most perfect shot okay i've talked about beauty now bokeh now this is a very important feature in actually um, focusing on your object and dissuading viewers from the background. Bokeh is a feature in the phone camera that takes pictures similar to that of the digital camera whereby you have a whole blurry kind of background. Even merely looking at it now you see that the background is kind of blur already. The background is kind of blur. But it just zooms in automatically. If you notice when we AI cam, it was not this close. You see it was a little bit distance. But let me go back to Bokeh now. You see it zooms in automatically so you have to move back a bit okay now just try to keep your hand as stable as you can you want to get the perfect shot for bokeh because it blows out your background and makes it beautiful so let's test that out so this is the picture i took just now as you can see we have a whole blurry background the ones i've been taking before you saw the background looks like you saw the background looks like but this one it has a blurry kind of background thereby focusing on this one it's only the object that is not blow you can see it clearly written here mark book here you can see this camera everything is clear it, it recognizes the object of the photograph it only blows out the remaining part of the photograph so i hope you understand that's bokeh it's how many people take a blurry background kind of picture okay and i like to stop here for the purpose of this basic tutorial this is ar shot this is ar shot which is a fun kind of shot whereby if you have your face in there you can uh, put fake glasses on your face and you know if you have it on your phone feature you can just try it out but i don't want to really talk about it this is a panorama kind of shot panorama is a complicated shot i'm not even talking about that at all in this tutorial that will be in the advanced um, picture editing picture that will be in the advanced phone photography class okay Okay, so now that we have talked about basically everything, let's talk about aspect ratio. It is right here, aspect ratio. You can make a wide angle shot. You see, now the thing covers the entire entirety of my screen. I don't like it. You can make it a one ratio one. That's a square kind of image. It talks about the size of your image. But I don't like this as well. So I just go back to my four ratio three shot, which is what I like best. If I want to make if I want to make it a one ratio one kind of shot. I'll actually do that while editing the picture and this is a quick zoom feature this right here that's macro shot this is a wide angle shot this one will zoom in this one will zoom in even the more but i just like to keep it at um, one one times okay now having talked about everything it might not be the exact same setting that i've gone through now it might not be the exact same way on your own phone on your own phone it might be the exact same way but you by now you must have been seeing some similarities you must have seen some similarities okay so what i want you to do is this S send me a dm on whatsapp that's my number showing right there on your screen send me a dm on whatsapp and tell me how your phone camera looks like so i might be able to help you out okay i might be able to help you out 
so like i said we are done with the practical now we want to go into the editing with the photoshop express application so i just like to take some pictures before i start that so let me clear my camera again because in the process of talking some other just particles particles might have settled on it so let me just clean it again all right now i can take some shots personally i don't like taking portrait shots i like taking landscape shots so permit me to take landscape shots this time by the way you can zoom in by pinching in sorry you can zoom in by pinching out and pinching in see that see that so someone might have needed that so i'm using bokeh whereby i can take a blurry background kind of picture so i just try to make my hand stable now and uh, it's not so i want to set my focus now i just have to tap on it and increase the, you see that and don't forget i said try to keep not try not to keep it at the exact center so i'm moving this is bright this is bright so i just move it to the side and then i'll take the picture let me check it out So as you can see in this picture, it was obviously blur. The focus was not well set, so I have to go back. Let me just delete that. So I just go back and take it again. Okay, I think I'm close enough now. Like I said, take multiple shots to take out your best shot. Okay, this is perfect. This is clear enough. The object was well clear and the rest of the photos. Okay, I think this was a little bit clear. This as well. Oh no, this is not part of it. At least we got this got this and um, the rest is blue so i believe i've taken um enough shots i can just pick out the best and go ahead editing and one final thing before i go into the next um session angle of shots i can decide to take this directly in front of the camera and i can decide to take this by the side i can decide to take this like this the angle i can decide to go down a little bit and as you can see we have reflections of the sky and that i think i love this shot i'll take it yeah let me use a bokeh mode to take the picture the landscape I love that you can sorry you can decide to go up as well you can decide to come down depending on the nature of the shot so if it's a human being you are shooting like when i say shoot i mean you're taking the picture of the human being okay you can just try to maintain the eye line let the camera be at the high level of the subject or a little below or a little above except if it's like i said a complicated kind of shot okay so now we are done with the camera settings let's go into full scale editing see you in the next video
And finally, here we are, guys. I welcome you to this session where we are going to be editing the pictures that we have taken. Actually, this is the most interesting part of this uh, tutorial because this is where all the magic happens. This is where the beautification comes in, and you know, the beauty of everything we've been doing since morning. This is where it's going to show. So the first thing I want to do is to go select out of all the multiple pictures I've taken so far. I just want to make a selection so that I will just um, know which one to edit. We are going to be editing two pictures actually. I just want to make a selection of the first one. These are the blue ones. You know we took several ones and some of them were blue. I think this was part of the blue ones. So I just want to look for one of the clear ones and go ahead editing um this one is also blur yeah i found it is the clear one yep this is the clear one so there are two ways you can go about it the first thing you want to do is to go to play store okay go to play store you have to have a data connection go to play store and search for photoshop express let's do that right now just search for it okay Photoshop Express and then search for it you will see this application right here mine is showing open because I have it already on yours it might be showing something like install install you understand install so once you install that um, you have to have enough space on your phone before you can install it so try to free up some space delete some monetary items on your phone before you start that so once you have installed it op try to open the application it's going to ask for you to register is that you open an adobe id or you sign up with facebook or you actually sign up with your gmail now i advise you to sign up with your facebook or gmail don't bother creating an Adobe ID, except if you want to go full scale editing. Those who are into full scale editing that do stuffs like um, let me show you my Adobe CC. <laughs> These are my Adobe applications: Adobe Capture, this Photoshop Express, this Lightroom, Adobe Draw. So if you want to have several Adobe applications and you want to actually go into a lot of editing, not with only photos, videos, and all, then you can open an Adobe ID. But if it's just for the purpose of this picture, I advise you to just use your Gmail to register or sign up with your Facebook account. Any of the two. Don't bother opening an adobe id i will have practicalized it but i've done that previously because i have the application already so i don't have to go into all of that so once you are done you can open the application you have to have data connection it's very important but once you are done signing up you don't need data connection to use it again the only time you need data connection is to sign up to the application once you are done signing up you don't need data connection again i hope you understand so i can just switch off my data so this is how the interface looks like so what you want to do is to search for the picture that you have chosen now of course this is a dilemma because i don't really recognize the one i chose now right here okay let's place stop right here i've selected the picture quite all right i know this is the picture but how to locate it here again is the issue now i don't know exactly which one it was when i was trying to locate so i have a simple solution to that just exit the application if you are using photos notice i'm using the photos application this is it right here I'm using photos so if you're using photos like myself or any other application just look for where you can edit the application for me it's right here you can see it right here so i just click on that right now now i want to edit it here now there is this option it gives me if i want to continue editing it right here or if i want to continue editing it on another application so this brings out a list of editing applications that i have on my phone applications i can edit picture on my phone it brings it out for me and obviously i want to use photoshop express so i'm just going to click on that and it will take me directly and open the interface for me that is the easiest way trying to search for it and locate it by yourself in the gallery on photoshop express application might be difficult but just go to edit in that same picture on your gallery application and then select another editing application and edit with this one you understand what i'm trying to say and it's going to bring you right here so this is how the interface looks like this is how the interface looks like let me brighten that up a bit we have this session this session this session this session and this session so i'll start with this 
these are like sort of presets when i say presets i mean some templates edited already edited templates for you if you don't want to go through trail of editing you can just select this one now vibrant autumn spring you just look for the best one that matches with your scene it's not everything that will match for example this somehow somehow match somehow it doesn't really match this spring tool also is doing well you can increase the intensity of that particular effect you see you can see that each effect is already named vibrant autumn spring summer winter invert bueno pastel is you know they are numerous it's plenty there it's plenty so just look for the one you want so it is already edited presets you can just select one and you know apply it to your edit to your picture rather to your picture this is a winter kind of effect you can increase the intensity and you can decrease the intensity of that effect on your picture okay this is invert this one inverts all the color black becomes white you know brown becomes somehow bluish or greenish i don't even know but that's how it works so those are already edited presets now mind you i forgot to mention there are different editing applications this is just photoshop express express application there is one called snapseed that one is even very popular among picture editors if you're a picture editor you know what i'm saying snapseed is also very good for editing okay very good but it has many features okay but in my experience of using snapseed and photoshop express so far i still like photoshop express mind you snapseed is a very good application also very awesome application but me i just prefer to use photoshop because i flow more and blend more with it probably if you are doing the advanced class i'll talk about snapseed and i'll show you all the features it has it has more advanced features than this one but this one is okay for a basic video editing, basic picture editor just you know basic picture editing and you know the awesome one okay so this is just a series of templates that they have already edited for you that you can just select and paste tweak the opacity and you are good to go you understand what i'm trying to say so that's it but i'm just going to go for normal now this ad i will come back to what this ad is all about it has its own meaning but i'll come back to what it's all about now this is under you know we've been in this session all this while this is where we have been now we are coming here now i don't want to explain this yet because this actually is the last thing you would do in your editing it's the last thing you would do it is just a sort a series of overlays and light leaks each have been named into segments light leaks bokeh grunge raindrops paper it's all just a series of overlays that you can put on your picture to make it beautiful now look at this one right here now i just selected this one i can decide to reduce the opacity i can um, i can decide to increase the intensity as well i can decide to choose this one I can decide to choose this one there are different 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 overlays there but you might not be able to detect the actual one to select until you are done editing so let's not talk about this just yet this of course the icon is obvious for cropping okay you can just crop a picture you want to I actually crop this yeah I'm actually gonna crop this so in case you made a mistake while you were shooting your picture and you kept it at the exact center though this one is not as, at the exact center you can check it very well you see that there is more space here than it is here so I've kept it to the right just like I said so I don't have to actually shift it again but in case you made that mistake you kept it at the exact center while you are editing while you are taking the picture here is those grid lines again you can see them here are those grid lines again you can easily fix that right here by shifting it to one side you understand but i'm not doing that so i'll just um open that up back okay right, so i just want to reduce the the size the space on top and under that's all i want to do so once you are done, just let's move to the next section. Okay, I think I cropped it a little bit too much. Let me just open that up a bit. Aha, this is nice. Okay, okay, I think I love this shot now. So, this is where the editing actually happens. Don't forget where we are coming from. These are the presets, the already edited templates. This one is the overlays, which we are still coming back to. This is for cropping. This is where the editing actually happens. This is where the editing actually happens. This is where you put a lot of effects, saturation. Okay, don't let me just talk about it. Let's just go right into it. Okay. This is for clarity. If your image is not clear enough, that is why I said if you are following the principles that we talked about in the camera settings and in the first session as well, tips, 
if you follow the principles and combine it with this one honestly you have an awesome edit even if the picture was not clear enough you can always come here and increase it increase it increase it to your liking mind you be careful not to do it too much you can see it's getting darker they might keep doing it this place gets dark so let's just reduce that a bit you can if the picture is also too clear in your own face so you can reduce it and you can see the number you can see the number is shown right here let me do that again just place your eyes on this place you see the number was showing the moment i start moving the slider here just place your eyes here can you see that can you see that can you see that so you can i'll just go to i'll just give this a value of 20. and that was 21 20 i said 20 yeah so you can move on to sharpen the image as well the, the image sharpening the image will bring out the edges for example these keys will show very well the edges will show very well you know, sometimes so let's just do that i can give that a value of 40 or something or 50. let's, let's say 50. It's not compulsory you actually measure. Just keep sliding until you think it's okay. It's not compulsory you actually give it a number value. Alright? Now, before I continue at this point, I like to come up here. I like to come up here. This is for when you are done exporting. So let's not even talk about that yet. This is for undo. If you made a mistake now, this sharpen now. This is where I want this sharpening to be. If I mistakenly increase it too much, I'll be like, oh, what have I done? I can easily come here and undo it. You see, this one is already here. You see it to come back. You see, I undid it. It came back here. So I can now increase it to whichever I want again. Actually, I think I will increase this to more than 50. Sharpening it is actually doing a great job. Okay, so that's for undo. And you can redo again when you have undone anything. This is for auto editing. This one, I do advise you to use it because if you tap it, the application will give the best edit it feels will match with that picture it will just edit it by itself that's auto editing it will apply all the settings by itself but i don't advise it i've tried it several it's it's the result is not usually great you can try it by yourself too there's no problem about that this is the comparison view if you tap this it will show you how the picture was looking like before and how it's looking now after you're editing let me tap it this is how the picture was looking before and this is how it's looking now. I hope you can see the difference. You might not see it yet because we have not edited so far. So let's just continue editing. Luminance intensity. I'm oh, sorry, luminance noise. This is for the luminance noise. This, <laughs> this is where you smoothing out rough edges. If you are any rough places, any rough places around, this is where you can smoothen it out. If you want, if you if you want your skin to be smooth, this is where you can do it. Just increase it. That's all. To whichever you want. I advise you not to do it too much because it makes the picture look somehow if it is too much. But just increase it to your liking. And at this point, I'd like to tell you if you have been sliding everything and you're not really seeing much difference, it doesn't mean it's not working. You no. Know? I made a lot of rubbish edit when I started <laughs> when I started using this application because I was thinking the effect is not showing, it's not showing. Don't worry, it's showing. Just keep doing this once more. You will soon see it. You understand? okay you will soon see the effect so let's keep moving you can just smoothen out skins here this is to reduce color noise i rarely use this but if you feel the color is shouting too much if the, the red is too much or there is a black that is too much or a blue that is shouting too much you can just reduce the color noise right here you understand this is the haze hmm. i really love this feature but if misused it can destroy your entire picture if there's something over your picture that seems like white, don't worry, by the time you start using this application very well, it will come to a point you will see picture and you will know the exact settings. Right now as I am, if I see a picture, an unedited picture, I will know and I will know the correct parameters to, to add to it. By the time I look at the picture, I will, I will say something like, okay, the highlight of this picture needs to be increased. You have to dehaze it a little, give it a little bit of shadow, decrease the exposure a little bit and then blast saturation, you know. I, I, I know the correct parameters to input. So by the time you use this application regularly, you actually know what to do. You actually know uh, um, the correct kind of edits to use. But now that you are just starting, just take it cool on yourself, okay? So this is a DS. The DS, if you have a kind of foggy picture, and there's a kind of white... How do I explain this? There's a kind of white... Uh, uh, 
if the white in your picture is too much and there's a kind of overlay on it that is making it not too clear, the haze will remove all those whitish something and make it really deep. You can see that's what the haze does, makes it really deep. But I don't want to use it too much, so I'll just leave that 40. Green now, never use this feature. Do you hear what I said? I'll say it again. This feature of green, never use it because you are the one introducing green into your picture. Let's use it and see how the results will look like. This is what the picture has turned to. Can you see all those greens right here? Oh my god. Except if you want to do a spectacular kind of shot or you want to make your picture look old on purpose, you can use it. But if not, you have, you have no business with this feature right here. I'll just take it away. Fade. This one too is like green. Never use it. It will make your picture look summer. See? Can you see how it's looking like now? But like I said, in case you deliberately want to use it for a particular purpose, then you can use it. Okay, but I don't like using it, so I'll just let me just leave it alone. Well, let me let me give a little bit of ten, you know, the value of ten. This is the exposure, of course. You know what exposure is? Brighten or reduce the brightness of your picture. This picture is actually dark, so I like to increase the brightness a bit. Don't do it too much, oh. See how it looks like if it's too much, so don't do it too much. Just increase it steadily until you feel it's okay. Can you see that? This is this is nice. This is actually nice. At this point, I think I'll go back to the clarity. Yeah. And sharpen as well. Where were we? Exposure. Now, this is contrast. Contrast actually brings out the hard parts of your picture. Can you see that? I advise you not to use it too much also. All of these effects, please make sure you are using it moderately, moderately. The only effect you can overuse, like I can say, is this sharpen. Even clarity, don't overuse it. But this sharpen is the one I can say that. See where my own is? 126. That's because it just keeps beautifying it and beautifying it. But the rest, be, be careful with it. Be careful with it. This is... Okay, so I don't want contrast. This is highlights. Highlights is nice. It brings out the bright part of your picture brings out the bright part of your picture and makes them really bright you can see now the frame of this laptop is really is looking really bright so don't use that too much as well so that's not to destroy the entire picture shadows bring out the dark part of your picture but increasing it will really take away the dark if you increase it the dark part will keep disappearing you see it keeps getting brighter but reducing it to bring out those darker parts of your picture you understand but in the case of this picture, I think increasing it is actually what works fine. Yes, increasing it is what actually works fine. Yeah. Increasing it is like exposure, like as if you are increasing the brightness, sort of. You understand? So that's how it works. White, of course. White, increasing it brings out the white part of your picture. And reducing it takes down the white part. But the effect is not really too visible like that. So I would like to reduce it here. As for blacks, just like the opposite of whites, reducing it brings out the black parts. You see, the more I'm redu reducing it, the more the black parts keep getting blackish. And if I increase it, the black parts will keep disappearing. So I just reduce it a bit. Not too much. Okay. Temperature. Now, temperature keeps, it gives your picture the feel like as if you're in a sunny kind of environment. It gives your picture a warm kind of feel. Check this out. You see how the picture looks warm. Don't let don't make it too much too. You see how the picture looks come out warm. I don't like using it. I used it a lot when I started editing pictures. And it's I don't if I, when I look back at those pictures now, I'll be like, what was I thinking? So don't use it too much as well. Tint. I like this tint. This tint is the particular effect I used in editing the picture of one of my friends. That picture. It gave it a purple kind of feel. If I increase it right now, you will see the effects you have. You see, it will introduce a purple kind of feel into the scene. It's nice. It's actually a nice effect. But I don't always want to use it except on rare occasions. Okay. Um vibrance. Vibrance enhances the color. It doesn't increase the color, but it only enhances it. Increasing the beat will enhance it 
and saturation will actually increase the picture quality saturation is like the last straw that will actually not break the camel's back this time <laughs> but bring out the work of everything you've been doing since morning don't joke with this saturation if it's too much your picture will be whack it will be too much like as if it's an amateur that is editing so just keep on doing it small 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 till you get to your final destination to it will enhance the color just wait and see can you see at this point we are done editing the pictures now let's go back to this comparison view i talked about the other time can you see now you can see there's a whole lot more difference let me click on it again you said it looked like before this is how the picture looked like when we brought it inside this is how it looked like when we brought it inside the editing application like this now this is how it looks like after we are done editing you can see there's a whole lot of difference there's a whole lot of difference in there so that brings me to this next um, compartment now we are done with this compartment this one this one this one the, i told this where the editing happens now this one this way you remove blemishes i've used this to remove pimples from a lot of people's faces while editing this is my laptop's camera let's assume it's pimples now for example it's just the camera but let's assume it's pimples let me just try to remove that or any blemish on your skin or in any part of the photo i'll just try to remove that let's see how it look like you can increase the size of the circle like by increasing or decreasing this one so i'll just leave it like this let me just tap on it and see the magic that will happen now did you see that it's just disappeared just like that that's what it does so if there's any part of the picture a small dot showing somewhere that you don't want to show just zoom in tap on it and it's gone but of course i want my laptop's camera to show so let me just un undo it by clicking here and my camera will come back oh there we have it the camera is back okay but of course there are some dots here i don't like that i would like to remove so let me just keep clicking on them and they'll keep disappearing one by one of course there are some part of the picture like that that we just have some strange dots you just have to tap on them and remove them mind you you have to be careful make sure it's not close to any edge if you tap on any edge Let's tap on this edge now. You see what will happen? It will destroy that edge. Okay? So let's undo it. Make sure it's not close to any edge. There are times you tap on it once, it may not leave. Just keep tapping. It will leave. It's what I'm saying now. I shouldn't sure have tapped on that point. Okay, I'll just leave that one. So I don't waste much of waste much of our time. Okay. Now moving on to this compartment. This is one on red eyes. You are may actually not need this part. As we are using a digital camera, you know what I mean by red eyes. Red eyes appears when that's advanced. <laughs> let me let me explain that. But you don't need it for now. You really take red eyes picture with a phone camera, really. So you might not need that. So this text. I love this one. You can use this to add text on your pictures. Wow. You can use this to add text on your picture. So let's just um there are different presets right there. I'm looking for one that is really nice that I can use. Mm, I think this one will work fine for my no, I'm changing it. Oh, something like this. Sorry, I, I I used to have issues selecting in cases like this, so pardon me. Okay, I think this one is cool. Yeah, I think this is actually cool. So you can just tap on it if you want to edit. Or come here and click on this one. You understand? So let's change it. I'll change my name. Speedy Blaze. You can see that right there? Done. I can put it on the laptop to make it look like I see on the laptop. Except for the perspective shot. Except for the perspective shot. You can also, you can you can always change it back if you don't want it to. You see that? 
can always change it if you don't want the one you choose but the text will still remain there always reduce the size to whichever you want that's how it works I just keep it somewhere right here you can add any text to your picture play around with these things play around with it these are the styles now let's come to the fonts let's come to the fonts you can choose any font you want you can see as I'm clicking on it it's changing as I'm clicking on it it's changing this particular font I used it to write blazy, blazy shorts for a long time before I now did my own custom um, signature watermark. I'm trying to look for the font we used the first time. Okay, let's just leave it at this to avoid wasting your time. You can choose any color black, white. You have this application is so versatile. Like I really love it. Many options to choose from. Many options. Of course, you don't want to use brown like this because it's not showing. So you want to choose a bright color that will actually show and something that will match. I'm not trying to put something that will match with the color of my system right here, or something that will match with the color of the background. But something that will match with the color of the background will swallow it. So let's just go for something bright. Uh, hey, this is similar to the color of my system right here. No, this, yeah. And the alignment. Maybe you want it left or right or center. Center is always good. So you just leave it like that. And there we are. You can now decide to add an extra effect. Now, we are done with text now. Let's move on to this place. You can decide to add an extra effect. You can click on it. Sorry. You can increase it. You can choose another one. There are many of them there. Depending on the situation of the picture. Many. You can see, just select from one of these lists and, you know, go be creative with it. Be creative. There are many uh compartments if it's something food you're looking for come here if something vintage you're looking for come here something splashes you're looking for come here if it's you know there are different different ones there you know let's let's look for one that will match with this case with this picture i can't find any at the moment okay let me just keep this as one corner The downside of this is you don't have total control of reducing it. You can only turn it around. Reducing it is a great hustle. Seriously great hustle. So let me just keep that at one corner right here. I don't know why I, I don't know how I have to keep it there, but I want to use every feature. Now let's come here to this compartment. This is borders. It gives you frame. Beautiful frame for your pictures. You see that? You see this? Thin black. This is not nice. There are different frames you can use. Different frames. As well, I wanted to sell this laptop now. I can use this frame and come back to text to write something like I'll change the color to black. Let me go and change the style. I don't like this style. I can come back here to write something like Mac Book Hair. Four gigabyte RAM. Two hundred K. Or whichever price you want to sell it. One fifty K. And whichever. You can always do that. As I wanted to say this laptop, I'm giving you an idea new. You can come here and just put it there. And you see? Let me remove the text. Let me remove this one too. This one is not selecting again. Let's go back to text. Okay, we have to be in this place. Now, you have to be in the place. If you want to select the text now. See this text I wrote now. You have to be in where text is to select text. If I want to select this one, I have to go to where I added it to it. Where I can select it. So this is obviously beautiful. This is beautiful. This one even appeal to the face of the person that wants to buy it. You understand? 
so that's it there are different frames there as well that you can use different frames so coming right here photoshop this is um advanced this is advanced like if you want to go for a paid program with adobe you can always use this but i'm not going to that so <clears throat> so we are done editing the picture there is a place i didn't touch we touch corrections and that's where we had all these things we didn't touch split tone now you might not really have to use all these all the, this all the time but experiment with it and see the results to give you You're just changing the feel of your pictures this is blur if you want to blur a particular aspect of your picture you can always increase this circle everywhere outside this circle will be blur increase it to the level you want you can see that outside it is blur now but i don't want it so vignette a vignette is let me remove the frame so you can see the work of this vignette very well vignette is this kind of shadow that you had around that you had around pictures if i reduce it to black shadow and if i increase it it'll be a white kind of shadow you see that but the black one needs to work best and then you can change the features of the vignette vignette play around with it there's nobody that will teach you everything 100 percent because there's a lot to learn except you want this video to be like three hours long but just play around with it and you'll discover a lot of things by yourself like I said, I didn't discover the full potential of this application on that day. I used it for years to try to discover the full potential. That's why I flew more with it than I flew with Snapseed. Now I'm saying vignettes, midpoint. I want that black to be around it and the laptop to be bright in the middle, you understand? That's what I'm trying to achieve right now. I think I've, I've done a pretty great job now that background is somehow dark you can see but the laptop is obviously visible okay so here we are let's check again see where we are coming from and see where we are now see where we are now and see where we are coming from the difference is just too clear it's just too clear so I like to, I would like to leave the edits like this yeah so once you are done editing you can always come here for, for exporting click export just wait for it it loads it takes some time to load but wait for it mind you click in here come to jpeg quality before you export anything before you save anything to gallery come to jpeg quality and change the quality to maximum i've changed mine yours will be probably in high or very high because you just downloaded it so change it to maximum so that it is in the full quality that you edited that it to export change it to maximum it's very important now i imported my own custom watermark you can see that blazy shot is showing somewhere right here when we edit the picture i will show it to you but the other watermark photoshop express photoshop express i don't advise you to use it because using their watermark will just leak the secret of what you are using to edit okay people know that you are using photoshop express application to edit you understand so i don't advise you using it on your pictures except if you feel it's fine no problem there are many ways you can see it's showing right here as i'm changing it it's showing it's showing but i don't want to use it so that's why i imported my own custom watermark and there we have it you can see it's written the blazy shot so once you are done with all of that you can set as wallpaper well straight from here even you can print and you can choose many other options it's it loads for a while but don't worry okay you saw that so you print that you can set as whatsapp private photo as your wallpaper your contrast photo there are many things but if you don't want to use it for all of that just come here and click save to gallery that's all save to gallery let it roll for a while you see your photo has been saved to the gallery and we are done so you can always come here another way of saving it is by clicking back when you are done editing and then save before exiting you understand but that will not have any watermark sure. 
and we are done so let's go to the um, to the folder of Photoshop Photoshop Express you can see it right here this is the picture we just edited you can see my watermark showing here blazy shots maybe in the advanced class I'll teach you guys how to create your own custom watermark now this is a beautiful picture you agree with me okay so we have come to the end of editing this picture now we are going to edit one more picture but in editing that picture i will not talk i will just edit it and you watch how i will do it and it will be your assignment you guys will go ahead and edit that picture as well but not this laptop picture i will send you the picture and you edit so thanks for watching through till this moment god bless you welcome guys i know i said i wasn't going to say anything in this session but i i found the need to actually say some things so here is the picture we want to edit this picture right here this is the picture we are going to edit i just took this picture at one time like that it's a blurry background picture obviously and um looking closely you discover that it is very clear I took it in a place where the lightning is sufficient under sunlight actually but i was able to manipulate the direction of the sunlight such that it will not cast shadows it was it is a really really clear clear picture so and i'm using the picture of a hand because i want you to know that it is not compulsory it has to be a human figure the principles i will use in editing this one is the same principles you can apply in editing human picture also if it is a human face that is showing or any object the same principle that guys is just follow the rules and you'll be fine okay but before i start editing this one i'd like to show you some other pictures this picture right here is a proof that it doesn't have to be a blurry background picture before it is beautiful in fact this picture is unedited i have not edited it at all and it's like this now imagine it look like if i edit it you can see how clear the grass is you can see how clear the image is just take a look at it so it doesn't have to be a blurry background kind of picture before like this one before the beauty shows okay so without further ado let's get right into it i updated my photos so this was not the actual interface that was in the last video i did when i wanted to edit the picture i updated it between the time i recorded that and the time i'm recording this so it's a different interface entirely i updated it from google play store so it's a different interface now okay so it's the photoshop express app right let's go there all right here we are so i remember explaining a lot of presets that we have here a lot of templates pre-edited you know templates it's someone like filters filters in snapchat or filter in instagram it's just someone like filter okay i remember explaining this one i remember explaining this one as well but i did not eventually use it in the last tutorial i should use it but i didn't eventually use it in the last tutorial so we'll talk about that right here and a particular place i didn't explain was here let me click that i didn't explain the function of this ad this is one of the reasons i'm talking in this tutorial normally it should just be a speed video and i should be done but i have to explain this aspect now let me explain this aspect for you if you have edited a particular picture for example I've changed the look of this picture just with that single slide. If this is how you want, if you're editing a lot of pictures, okay, and you want the same kind of edit for several pictures, instead of you to keep importing the pictures and keep sliding everything small, 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 you can just save this look like this. You know this is why I did it. Once you are once you have edited it to your satisfaction, you can just keep, you know tweaking a lot of things tweaking a lot of things this is not a standard edit i'm just going to make an example once you have edited it to your satisfaction and you are satisfied with what you have edited and you want it to be that same kind of edit on several other pictures all you have to do is come here click add and name it i'll name this blazy and you save look right here save the look it will now add it as a pre-edited template as well you can see it right here blizzy so it has added it to the 
list of the kind of filters that are here. So once you are done, go back to normal. Sorry, go back to normal. Because by doing that, it has doubled the edit. So just go back to normal. But you can see the blazy has been added here. It has been added. So the next time you import a new picture, just click on blazy and it automatically apply all those edits to the fresh picture you just imported. So that is the function of this one. I hope you understand and get my point. But of course, that is not what I want to edit. So I'll just re-import that. Photoshop and um so i already this picture so from this point i will speed up the video and when it's time for me to use this function of these overlays i will i will return it back to the normal speed of the video so see you on the other side <laughs> i guess Okay guys, I welcome you back to um, this session. You have been so amazing so far. And I hope you can see right here, I've given this photo the best edit that I want for it. Okay, so let's check where we are coming from by clicking here. You see that this is how the picture looked like before and this is how it looks now. You see there's a clear difference. You see again, the colors were not so sharp. The everything was somehow flat. You might think it's good <laughs> when it was still raw, but now the edited version obviously looks better. The colors have popped out more, and you know, I've tried to give it a, a, a whole new different feel. Okay, so let me just um come right here and let me show you how this is used. Well, there is no special how to how it is used. Just look for the best filter, the best overlay. That you think goes best with this kind of image, and you are done. You can see these things here, these light rays here. So there are different of them like that. Several, 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 and there are different sections. There's grunge, there's raindrops, there's paper, there's cosmos, watercolor. So if you are familiar with the app very well and you're just looking for a particular one, just go straight to the session. But for now, let's keep scrolling. Let's keep scrolling through. We will check through everything one by one. But usually, I would advise you guys to always check through everything by yourself. I love this. I actually really love this. Yeah. But let's keep checking. This is P12. So, you guys notice this is P12. So, let's keep going. Wow, this is cool too. Almost all the effects under this cosmos section, they are really really cool effects. This is nice as well. But guys, as you know, it will be beneficial if you can keep playing around these things, keep practicing, keep testing different ones, keep practicing and practicing. That's how you become pro. That's how you become professional at this thing we are talking about here. By the way, if you click on a particular kind of overlay, you can reduce the opacity of the overlay and how much it has effect on the picture and you can increase it to how much you want you see that you can reduce you can increase so whichever one works best for you i love this as well this place it makes this place more bright and the rest is more flat it's cool okay i skip this this is really cool Okay, so I, 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 I chose P12 the other time. Let's go back to P12. I don't know, I just love this effect. C12 is cool, but it has this kind of stuff right here. So I'll just go for P12 instead. And it has been increased with maximum. It can decrease and increase, remember. You see that? 
So let's check where we are coming from again. Wow, the difference is entirely clear. This is how the picture looked like before. And this is how the picture looks like now. There is a whole lot of difference. You can see that, right? This is how it was. And this is how it is now. So this is how you heard it. So this picture, I will send it to you guys. Now, I don't want you to edit it the exact same way I edited it. I want you to bring in your creative side. I will send this picture to you. You will see it on in the in the file of this um, course. You will see it in the file. I want you to get creative with this picture, especially in the aspect of these overlays. There are several overlays, and of course in the effect too as well. Get creative with it. Okay, take like apply different edits to it give it different overlays see which one works best for you and send it to my dm on whatsapp so that i will you know know how far you have gone so i hope you have enjoyed this so far as well let's export it as for you if you don't have a watermark yet you can just come and click on none do not add any watermark but i've created my own custom watermark so i'm just going to click that and here you can save to gallery it might take some time to load it happens at times especially if you have added several effects to the image it needs to take some time to load at times so you just have to be patient okay it's saved already so let's just go back let's go to the folder and check it out it's not reflecting on my folder yet that's because i just saved it just now it's not reflecting yet but um it should be okay i found it this is it this is the picture where it just now see how clear man this quality is like <laughs> Is that of this world so for a phone photograph oh, this quality is really 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 nice really nice like really nice so i'll send you guys a picture and give it your best shot thank you for watching god bless you yay congratulations guys you have just completed the mobile photography course otherwise known as the phone photography class right now if you apply the principles correctly you should be taking amazing dope pictures with your mobile phone however i like you to take note of some things one you don't become a professional in a day it is through consistent practice that you become a professional in mobile photography when you keep taking photos and editing them by yourself you will discover some things that work best for you everything that i have laid down in this course at the way it has worked for me now if you watch another phone photography class or anything online it might have some different principles to the way i have taught you and that is because i used the principles that has worked for me and i was only able to discover that through consistent practice so if you too are consistent in what you do you will discover principles that work for you and that works best with your mobile phone and that's how you become a professional don't forget consistency is key be consistent don't take a mobile course and under one week you conclude that it is trash no it is not you just have to be consistent and i say for the last time be consistent thank you very much for following through this course i really appreciate you guys for your time thank you so much be sure to follow me on my social media handles i'm speedyblaze26 across all platforms if you type speedyblaze26 on facebook instagram twitter you are going to find me there that is my name on every social media platform you can purchase any of my mobile courses that are also available especially the video editing course it is very much available for purchase be sure to check that out as well thank you very much once again for purchasing this course and i hope you have learned something i have been added to and i hope to see you in any of my other courses bye for now <laughs>